<laughs> oh, let's see how the signal holds up. Let's see. Is it working? Let's see. Thank you, Jesus. I just pray your grace and your blessing over the signal. In Jesus' name. What are you called to do? I want to talk about this. It's important. Important topic. Yeah, if you guys can hear me, say something. Type in something so I can see comments. Let's see. And we're going to talk about this <clears throat> topic. What are you called to do? Okay, well, I see there's a few people on. Can you comment for me as so that I can see that it's working? Okay, looks like it's working. The audience is being built. Let's see here. Okay. All right. How's the audio? Can you hear me? Okay. Amen. Hi. Good morning, you guys. Okay. I see it's starting to starting to work. We got some momentum building. The numbers going up. Okay. Praise God. Well, I just want you guys to know that you are called to do something extraordinary on the earth that no one else is just like you. No one else has gone through the exact same experiences that has shaped who you are in Jesus. And, and so th the question, you know, hit me just, just a little bit ago before I came on live. And that was, what are you called to do? You know, one of the things that the Lord told me I'm called to do is he, I'm called to do mass crusade evangelism mass crusade evangelism meaning um going after the masses and evangelizing the law so i've spent years um really years going after souls as a soul winner and teaching other people to be effective soul winners that's been what i've been really honing in on training and equipping in the body of christ ephesians 4 to do the work of the ministry until each one comes to the maturity of the faith and we're all in process and um and so anyway I'm, i i felt that the question was for you that really for every one of us like what are we called to accomplish you don't have to get a prophetic word um to know what the bible says about what you're called to do um hey share this post you guys this is going to be a really important topic i think a lot of people haven't even asked themselves the question what am i called to do what am i called to accomplish what does the lord want to do you know in me through me to me <laughs> to get me ready to respond to his invitation or his calling uh, you know, to accomplish something special, something lasting, something unique um, on the earth. And so you can type it in if you feel like God has shown you what you're called to do. And then we can unpack this. We can talk a little bit about, you know, what does the scripture say that, that we're meant to be doing, you know, with our time. And, and in these times in history um, where there's a lot of unrest, there's a lot of things going on in the world around us. Um, a lot of times people will shelf what they're called, you know, to do because of the times. And so let's talk about that first. Okay, so number one, the times have nothing to do with the Great Commission. In other words, if you're called to fulfill the Great Commission and there's no caveat, there's nothing in the Bible that says, well, you should put that on hold or you should not do that if things are, you know, if there's unrest or if there's challenges politically or if there's, you know, um, circumstances or so it, when the Bible says to go into all the world and preach the gospel, bring the good news, mend the brokenhearted, you know, heal the sick. That's a commandment. Um, <laughs> raise the dead. That's like more than just bringing people into the greatest miracle, which is salvation. Um, you know, but but it's um, there's something about recognizing that as not a suggestion, the great suggestion, but the great commission, the great commission. So who's meant to do it? Are we supposed to be making disciples? Well, the Bible says make disciples of all nations. So we have a, a responsibility as obedient followers of Christ to go and make disciples, whether you're discipling your friend, your family member, somebody who's younger than you, uh, you know, maybe a colleague at, at work, you're pouring truth into them. Um, but discipling is, is meant to be 
um, uh, you know, a, a, a way to reproduce. In other words, be fruitful and multiply. What did you do? The Lord says, what did you do with what I gave you? Well, I was afraid, so I buried it in the ground. You remember the story of the talents? Well, the idea is don't waste your talent by burying it in the ground, by being afraid. Because remember, he said, this wicked servant, depart from me, and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. He's talking about, you know, in this case, I believe he's talking about hell. So here's the thing, to live heaven on earth where God's taught us to pray, our Father, the focus is Him, <laughs> who art in heaven, recognizing His position uh, it, where He's seated and then us being grafted in and seated with Him in heavenly places. So he, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. That's like honor to You, glory to You. You are worth my highest praise kind of thing. Just It's an affectionate way of saying that. Um, you know, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, your domain, your place of authority, your dominion, you know, on earth, right? He taught us to pray this and ask for, for his kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. And what does that look like? Well, in heaven, there's no sickness, there's no disease, uh, there's no, you know, everything. So it's like, it's not, that stuff doesn't exist in heaven. So we're supposed to, from where we're seated, begin to exercise our God-given right. And Jesus was given all authority. Now Christ is in us as the hope of glory and wants to bring that now through us. And sometimes he has to do some things to us to perfect us as the author and the perfecter of our faith. The perfector actually suggests we're not yet perfected, which is a wonderful thing. I mean, just to know that you are being perfected, you are being, you know, the Bible says be being filled. There's this like this continual action verb where we fill up on who he is and we learn to surrender and yield more and more and just to allow him to do whatever he wants as Lord. But um, I really wanted to address this because I felt like the Lord said there's a lot of people not knowing what they're on the planet to accomplish, not knowing what they were actually made to do. So we know in the Bible it says, um, you know, he gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and some to be teachers. Right. And so we know there's like these five different uh, these five different tasks, uh, assignments, uh, even offices where you can see which one of these is the most prominent. What, what am I most inclined to do? Maybe, maybe you operate in multiple or all, um, by the Holy Spirit. But here's the thing, understanding what you were really designed to do. What did God make you uniquely to do? Like some of you, you love to sit around and dialogue. You love to sit around maybe with the sheep and you love to have conversation that can deepen and sharpen and strengthen. And maybe you have a natural heart like a shepherd where you want to protect and preserve and develop and, and mature. Amen. And so the shepherd's heart is they want to protect, they want to provide for, they want to care for, uh, they want to defend, they want to develop. There's these things where, where there's a unique role in the shepherd and there nobody shepherds like King Jesus because he's the good shepherd. Some of us that are shepherds, you know, we feel like, okay, I know I'm supposed to be like Jesus, even though I, I'm not quite like Jesus, but I, I aspire to be, you know, like him uh, in, in a good way. And, and then you try to do your best. Amen. But there's other people that they're like, you know what? I know that I'm supposed to go after souls because I'm built to go after souls. Like I went fishing. You guys know the story. I went fishing, uh, you know, recently. And, uh, and the Lord says, lead this, this captain to me and then pray out loud and ask me for a fish because I want to teach that man that I honor prayer when there's faith behind it from knowing that you're a son. So, I mean, I was out there for two hours. I had caught nothing, but Lord, we toiled all night and have caught nothing anyways. And so I had caught nothing. Okay. And, and the Lord says, acknowledge me before men and I'll acknowledge you before my father. Remember that deny me before men and I'll deny you before my father. That's a powerful scripture. That's a sobering scripture. That's like what? And so I actually knew what he was saying. And then I just out loud of my mouth, I had caught nothing. The, and the guide is, he said he's Jewish, you know, which, you know, it, he, it was his way of saying, you know, I know all about Jesus, but he didn't know Jesus. Right. Um, but he knew about Jesus anyway. And so, I said, here, um, I said, Lord, 
I put my hand in the air and I said it out loud because you said acknowledge me before men. So I, out loud, I just go, Lord, I thank you that you love me, that I'm your child, I'm your son. And Lord, you said I have not because I ask not or I ask amiss. So I'm not going to miss when I ask, but I'm going to ask and I'm going to believe. I'm going to ask you, Lord, could you give me one big, nice trout that I'd be excited about? And I just receive that trout by faith in Jesus name. I said it just like that. I th and I began to thank him for what I was believing him for, which faith will celebrate before it sees. Right. So that's amazing. Anyway. So I said, I receive it. And she said, I'm talking seconds, maybe five, one, two, three, four, five, brown. And I go fish on. And, and the guy, he just kind of chuckled. He thought I was kidding. Uh, my friend Bruce who was there. Uh, he thought I was kidding. They both thought I was kidding because I had just prayed out loud. They know I had caught no fish. I didn't even have a bite. And, and for hours and all of a sudden I pray and I say out loud, I acknowledge the father, I acknowledged him before men, right? And then bam, the fish comes when I asked for it and I received it by faith. And uh, anyway, it was a testimony to the point where the, I said, have you ever seen that before? Where somebody prays for a fish and then seconds later they catch one and a big one. It was not a small fish. It was a 19 and a half inch rainbow. Okay, it's about as big as these rainbows get out there on the Yakima River. So anyway, he, the guide's been doing this, I don't know, 20 years. He goes, no, in, in 20 years or whatever, I have never seen anyone pray like that and then see a fish hit literally five seconds later you had the fish on and i go wow that's amazing i go well you know why i believe that happened i believe god who loves you wanted you to see that the bible is legit that that, that his word is alive that jesus is the living word jesus is the word who became flesh like jesus holy spirit lives in me that's the spirit of christ because i've received christ i've been born again i've been grafted into the royal priesthood so i'm a son now of the living god and as a son knowing who i am i know i can ask for anything and believe and not doubt not waver and anything that i ask according to what i say i will even i will see it i will receive it it will happen if i believe and I said, I just know that that's how it works. And so when I asked the Lord, like, why am I not catching any fish? He said, acknowledge me out loud. And then I knew that was the key to obey him. I simply said, Lord, I thank you. I actually said, Father, I thank you because he's my father. Amen. We are friends of God. So I'm like, Father. And so I acknowledge him that Jesus did the same thing. He's like, Father, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, your will be done, not mine. And so there's something about, you know, just acknowledging the Father and then just like, whoop, and then bam, the fish is on and it's an unusually large, gorgeous rainbow. Of course, it was catch and release. So he just brought it in, took a look at it, got a picture and threw it back. But it was just so fun to catch this thing. It was big. It was a fighter. It was fun. Anyway, and it was such a testimony that that Jewish um, uh, guide, fishing guide, uh, got born again. I actually got a word of knowledge about his knee. And God touched it and brought healing. And between the fish and the healing, uh, he wanted to receive Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And I made it real simple, nothing weird. I just said, amen. Can I just say a blessing over you? He's like, sure. I go, Lord, I just bless this God. I thank you. I, I said his name out loud. And I just said, Lord, we just honor him. Thank you for, um, you know, for uh, teaming us up today to be able to bring these big fish into the boat. That was a blast. It was fun. And Lord, we just command it. Hey, here, you know what? I command that knee to be healed, by the way, and God's healing your knee. I say, here, pray this prayer. Say, Jesus. So I just said, say, Jesus. So he says, he hesitantly at first, he's like, Jesus. Because I, I explained to him, that the only way that I was able to catch that fish is, you saw what I did. I prayed. I said, Father, because I know that that's how it works. He taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven right and so bam you know that was supernatural i said that's god revealing himself to you that jesus is the son of the living god that the father god loves his son and then he gives us the right to be called sons and daughters of god and i said here pray this prayer say jesus i receive you as my lord and savior anyway i was all fired up because this guy got born again and that's the greatest miracle and then i go into the sandwich shop with my ceo friend 
And he just saw this. I mean, he's freaking out. He's never seen that before. He's just freaking out. And I said to the guys behind the counter, I go, hey, guys. I go, you guys are doing an amazing job in here. And I said, has it been a while since you heard that? And they're like, oh, yeah. And they looked at each other and chuckled, right? They're, I don't know if their manager was kind of on them or whatever, but they were not feeling so appreciated at the sandwich shop. And I said, hey, guys, I'm going to just, can I just speak a blessing over you? And they're like, okay. And they're kind of like looking at each other like, that's weird. And then I just started blessing them. Lord, I just bless them. Lord, I thank Thank you that they're showing people your ways. Maybe they don't even know they're doing it, but you're the son of man. You did not come to be served, but to serve and to give your life as a ransom for many. And God, I just thank you for these two. I pray you bless them. Pray you give them unusual tips. And I'm just honoring them. And they're just like, whoa, that was super cool. Thanks, dude. But they, they didn't have a grid for what was happening. They didn't understand. Um, they didn't have Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I said, here, dude, say this. Say, just say this little prayer. It's gonna You're going to feel so much better. Just say Jesus thus it call in the name of the Lord right shall be saved and so anyway they, they receive Jesus and we invite you to be I invite you to be my Lord and my Savior fill me to overflowing with your Holy Spirit and baptize me in your passion and fire and by your Holy Spirit I give you my whole life and I make you my Lord and Savior from this day forward I'm gonna live for you I confess any and all sin known or unknown through the blood of Jesus. And I forgive myself and those who hurt me. And just praying that simple prayer. And these two guys give their life to Jesus. And here in just the last hour, three people have got saved. You know why that is? It's because the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So if you're wondering today, what am I called to do? Why am I here on this planet? I'm here to say, he who wins souls is wise. If you're not actively winning souls, you are missing what you were made to do as a follower of Jesus. Jesus didn't have to say, have people say in the name of Jesus because he is Jesus. He just said, follow me, amen? So what are we supposed to do? Put the hand of the wayward into the hand of the Savior. People need saving. And some people don't know they need saving. They go and do things their own way until they get so broken, miserable, depressed, and even suicidal. And at last they turn back to the very reason that they were created. And I feel like God's just saying, I want you not to be like the wicked servant that got scared and, and buried the talent. But I want you to invest in the right thing. Take your life and give your life... Like Jesus, as a drink offering, you're saying, Father, I'm giving you my life today. I'm not living for myself anymore. I don't want to be in this empty, chase the things of the world mindset. I want to pursue you. I want to pursue your kingdom. And I want to be used of heaven to see you get glorified on this earth. And so, God, would you help me to hear your voice? And I will choose now what I'm going to do when you speak to me. I'm going to obey you. And it's fun to obey. God speaks, we respond. We, we, if you have a heart that wants to do what he says, your ears are actually going to open up. And as he said in the word that my sheep hear my voice and a stranger's voice, they will not follow. Why is that so profound to me? I think it's, pro oh, I got a hummingbird right here next to me. That's cool. I like these little hummingbirds. They're super cool. Anyway, I like how they're just so little and they're so fast that it's like, woo, 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 woo. what if we were like hummingbirds responding to the spirit of God? He's like, go here. And we're like, woo. he's like, come over here. Zoop. Here, sit down. <laughs> zoop, 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 zoop. What if we responded like hummingbirds? That'd be amazing. Bunch of hummingbird Christians running around out there. Anyway, but here's the thing. Like everyone should be winning souls. Amen. Everyone should be fulfilling the Great Commission. You don't need a prophetic word. Just do something about what you've already been asked to do according to the scripture. Go into all the world. That's wherever you are, wherever you're standing, wherever you're walking, your work. Uh, maybe it's employees or your associates. Uh, maybe it's at the grocery store and you just start to shine and bring the salt tell little stories but be sensitive to people's you know some people are just on the move you don't have time to give them a 10 minute or a 20 minute story but maybe a, just a quick little jesus loves you you know he's got a great plan for your life and watch what people say and how they respond some people look at you weird some people get angry when that's always good if you're you know you bring truth and the devil gets mad at you that's a good sign 
Um, but I would say just go out and make your make your number one goal to just shine before men, right? That they would see your good deeds and glorify the Father uh, who is in heaven. And so there's something about you've got the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead to accomplish um, the carrying out of the purpose of the Father on the earth while we're here on the planet. And I'm just so glad that you um, that have said yes to Jesus are wanting to learn and grow in the things of the Spirit. And many of you I know because I hear through the emails and through your responses and some of you PM us and uh, many of you have partnered with us in ministry to change the planet. And I'm so glad that you've done that. And I got to say, every single time that you step out you are passing the test every single time that you uh, face fear and operate from a position of love and faith you actually are changing the world around you and there's people who don't even realize you are actually more effective than you think and if the whole goal is just to be salt that causes thirst thirsty people drink drink is the living water this water i give you you'll thirst no more he's saying this water this this living water how can i get this water remember the woman at the well it's 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 the holy spirit and so we be being filled continually fill up on the spirit of god by feeding our spirit from the spirit and then even reading the scripture feeds your spirit reading the scripture read the red letters where jesus spoke and it's the most potent parts of the bible where jesus spoke things you know <laughs> i feel the joy of the lord but anyway get ready because god's going to send the harvest into your nets your willingness your open sail is what attracts the wind of the spirit the wind breathes on the flame the flame gets brighter and hotter our god is a consuming fire and he baptized by water and by fire if we're not on fire then how are we going to change the world well we got we got to have a flame amen everyone at pentecost when it fully come everyone had their own flame they weren't standing around going i like your flame better why is your more blue mine's more more orange and yours is yellow i don't know which flame's better listen just know you've got a flame to stoke the flame you fuel up on the things of the spirit you feed on the spirit pray in tongues if you don't pray in tongues ask god for the gift of tongues and then practice allowing the spirit to give you utterance and god doesn't give bad gifts there's nine mentioned in corinthians we we need to operate in the gifts so that we can bear the fruit amen you cannot bear the fruit of the spirit without operating in the gifts of the holy spirit and the lord distributes according to how he wills and, and it says one gets this gift and by an, by the same spirit and another that gift that doesn't mean you only get one gift the one gift is the holy spirit and within the package of the holy spirit all nine gifts are accessible to those according to how the lord wants to use you in that given moment He's not going to tell you to go prophesy without giving you the words. He's, he's not going to ask you to preach a message without fueling uh, the words. Don't worry about what you will say. Speak what the Spirit is saying and then let the Spirit get all the credit, all the glory. I don't like to plan messages just like this. I didn't plan anything to say. I felt the unction of the Lord and I, I stepped into the prompting so that I could just speak and be a conduit for him. And some of you, you're hearing things. And even though you've heard some of these things before, there's an unlocking effect where God's knitting together these pieces of revelation to give you a clearer picture uh, of the profound simplicity that comes from understanding. And his wisdom is available. You can ask for it every day. And I ask for wisdom uh, daily. I, I would say almost every day. I say, Lord, would you increase my wisdom? Because I need wisdom from heaven. I need the wisdom of God. Amen. In order to do what I do, I have to be able to know how to choose. Um, and sometimes we choose correctly, but our timing's off. So make sure you're hearing the Lord. Make sure you're listening for him, number one. And then just be willing to respond to him. And from the willingness, he sees your hearts right, postured for, uh, before him. Like, God, my heart belongs to you. Uh, I don't want anything else to own my heart but you. you remember he who loves father and mother wife husband children more than me is not worthy of me what he's saying is don't let anything else become uh you know the focus of your life but but seek first the kingdom of god his righteousness he said he'd add everything else besides and whatever hurt has happened whatever thing has gone wrong uh in your life it's part of all things working together for the good according to those who love god and are called according to his purpose so what does god want to do with you he wants to use you powerfully uh so so, so he's going to touch little places and he's going to perfect he's going to you know chisel away at some of the rough edges so you can re reflect like a diamond 
the brilliance of the light of his glory. And then he's going to he's going to power you up with the things of the spirit so that you can go forth in the land to bring the simple gospel message, which is good news. Good news is you weren't even born. Christ died for you. He knew you were going to need a saving. So as the savior, he died on the cross. Perfect sacrifice. He had never sinned. He became your sin who knew no sin. And he calls you now that receive this gift of righteousness by faith, by believing. Uh, he gives you this gift of salvation. He gives you the greatest gift ever to be saved. You cannot save yourself. I tried. That's how I know it doesn't work. It doesn't work. I tried to live for myself and I was utterly miserable. I attempted suicide at 23. I'm 50 now. And I've been walking with God ever since that turnaround when I began to turn my life back to Jesus. He's like, Nathan, I saved you to live for me. You know, you tried it your way and you were miserable and you wanted to die. Well, now would you let me be your Lord truly? Not just say a prayer and have a psychological conversion, but say a prayer and let the Lord begin to circumcise your heart so you get on fire for the things of God and begin to feed your spirit from the spirit of God. And as you read the word of God and as you interact with Jesus, the living word, you'll have the rhema and the logos. You'll have the written and the spoken and it's a powerful one-two punch and you will knock down barriers with God and roadblocks and distractions and 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 all of the things that the enemy tries to do to keep you from your calling and God will give you absolute clarity and peace in the midst of storms and supernatural strength to be a world changer that's what he has for you but we must begin to make disciples intentionally teaching them to obey everything God has commanded teaching them to hear his voice and respond teaching how do we walk this thing out practically in, in our everyday life and as we do this we get more and more effective at being disciple makers so make disciples who make disciples who make disciples and you'll be obeying the great commission and you'll have fun doing it it's a blessing let me just say a prayer for you father i just bless these who are watching god oh look at you the babies oh look at the babies oh look at you you're so cute oh i love the babies you do the babies oh oh you want some love too okay and so father we just ask <laughs> my my wife really wanted another frenchie so so we got another frenchie she's so happy with that little dog that dog is super cute Anyway, Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing in the body of Christ. We thank you. You're empowering the flock to rise up. You're you're causing people to band together so they could accomplish more because we're better together. I just pray, God, that you would do a mighty work in every life and every heart, God, that you would heal the hurts, God. Remove the woundedness um, that, that can sometimes cloud our, 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 our understanding or dilute our focus. And we ask, God, that there would be like a laser-like focus where we're just fixed on you that we uh like you jesus always were looking to the father you only did what you saw him doing we pray that we would also be able to look to the father like you taught us to do and that by your spirit living in us we would be one with the father on earth as it is in heaven cause us to be exceedingly fruitful that we could multiply your cause that your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven we're asking this in the mighty name of jesus and we thank you for what you're going to do in the hearts and lives of the people who are watching lord thank Thank you for supernatural shares and likes Bear, break through the barriers of those blockades and lord don't let anything interrupt this important message let the message go forth in a supernatural way i bless the broadcast i bless your people and i bless what you will do god to send shock waves into the realm of the spirit to tear down and root out every evil scheme of the enemy let your spirit go forth and let your word not return void for your kingdom purpose and for your glory we pray and all the people said amen hallelujah somebody god bless you guys love you guys so much thank you hey special thanks to all of you who are partners with us in ministry you make this possible to find out more about our um, uh, organizations uh, you can go on the website we're revamping ah, that just reminds me i have to call my friend craig we're revamping we're working on the websites this week so you'll see a lot of cool updated stuff i'm going to put an updated calendar uh, when i'm preaching the gospel into the nation so you guys can follow along um, but here you, you can go to the 
therockrevivalcenter.com if you want information about our revival center. Uh, and that's called therockrevivalcenter.com. Here in Tacoma, Washington, we're planting another rock revival center at the ocean uh, here in Washington. We're excited about that. We've acquired the building and the land, and now we're just fixing it up. Uh, so pray for that project, the Rock Revival Center launch uh, number two. And then um, if you want to find out about our stadium events that we do, um, Awaken the Planet is being uh, pushed out, and we're thinking we're going to put up a big revival tent this year at the ocean property. It's, it's beautiful, seven and a half acres right above the ocean, uh, just next door and it's it's in the tsunami relief zone so if there was ever a tsunami all the people go to high ground and that's what we bought and so it's going to be incredible i'm excited to see that come together for aberdeen and oquium and gosh seabrook and uh what are the uh, ocean city ocean shores that whole area is going to get lit up for jesus and it desperately needs a move of god amen it's not just eloquent speeches that are going to bring the transformation it's the demonstration with miracles signs and wonders that follow those who believe that's what we're going to see in that western side of Washington along the coast. It's going to get lit up. California, Oregon, all of it. Uh, up, up into Canada and Alaska, that there's going to be a massive move of the Spirit. And it's going to go all over the world as the Lord's pouring His Spirit out on all flesh. Um, and then if you wanted to find out about my personal ministry or invite me to come and minister, uh, you can do that at Nathan French Ministries. Dot com. That's Nathan French Ministries. Dot com. I feel the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We get strong when we're delighting in the Lord. And as you obey the Lord, as you get in the river and flow with the Spirit, you will actually experience the joy of the Lord, regardless of circumstance. What I love about joy, <laughs> oh, what I love about joy is it's not dependent on circumstances. Happiness comes from the, the word happenstance, which is based on circumstances. It just means if my circumstances are good, happenstance, then I will be happy. And so happiness and joy are totally different. Happiness comes from happenstance. If my circumstances are good, I will be happy. But joy, my friends, is a gift from God. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. When he gives you this gift of joy, remember the kingdom of God is made up of what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So stay jolly, stay full of joy, laugh with the devil, he's a liar. If you hear a lie in your spirit, as you think about what you're thinking about, if you hear a thought that comes in your mind, sift that through the spirit and determine, is this thought from God or is it from the devil? I bind the voice of the stranger. I bind the voice of our own wills. We only want to hear what the spirit is saying. And Lord, we receive the word today and we thank you for it in Jesus name. God bless you guys. We love you so much. Thank you for supporting the ministry. Thank you for uh, being a part. Thank you for watching online. Thank you for sharing this. And uh, we will see you soon. Hopefully some of you will come visit us out here in Washington as we're preparing to launch the Rock Revival Center number two. God bless you. We'll see you soon.